What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new creepy story video. Notice guys, I am wearing your favorite hat. Yeah guys, apparently in my last video where I wore this hat and I got some scruff, you guys went crazy. You guys left me all these compliments. You like Harry Terry much better than normal Terry. This hat automatically turned me into a model. Guys, all the ridiculous comments aside, thank you, thank you. Because of you, I am wearing the beard. I am wearing the hat once again for you guys. Anyways guys, today we are we're gonna be reading another scary story by Horang, and this is called Ghost in the Masang Tunnel. This is a Korean horror story, so you know that it's gonna be freaky. <laughs> Horang, I've read his stories before. He's an amazing artist and writer. I have never actually read Ghost in the Masang Tunnel, but you guys have been requesting it, so I decided, all right, you know what? Why not? All right, guys, so without further ado, grab your bottle of popcorn, get any friends you have to watch this with you unless you want to be alone. Why did you leave me? Make sure to turn off the lights. And one last thing, guys, make sure you're subscribed. Okay, sorry, let's begin. Ghost in Masang Tunnel, written and illustrated by Horang. It was several years ago, Looks like we have a woman sitting on the train, or maybe it's a bus, I'm not sure yet. I was on my way to my hometown, alone, on an express bus. Okay, well there's your answer, literally the next slide. She gazes as she reads her book, very deep in thought, and easy on the eyes. She looks up, it seems like she notices something. There were only 10 or less passengers seated here and there on the bus. Now, if you guys have ever been on an express bus, I would say it's not as long as a typical bus that you would find in the US, but it is definitely a lot nicer. Just then, it looks like the lights go out. As the bus slid into a tunnel with the surrounding becoming dark, I let my eyes shut, closing the book I was reading on the bus to kill the boredom of a long bus ride home. Oh, okay, dude, I was I was getting scared already. I thought like the power went out or something, but the bus, I forgot. I've taken these buses before to and from different cities in Korea. And basically, once you get started on the trip, a lot of people take naps or sleep during these long rides. So the bus just naturally turns off most of the lights inside so people can relax and go to sleep. Just then, oh, oh, dude, everything got dark, what the heck? It was not long before I fell asleep. I might have been pretty tired. Some time has passed. I opened my eyes again and stared outside the window to find that we were still in the tunnel, looking all glaring red while the bus was running continuously. Since it felt as if quite a long lapse of time had gone by, I just thought that it was another tunnel different from the one where I fell asleep. But no matter how far the bus ran, there was no end to the tunnel. This is like one of my worst fears, dude. Like being stuck in a perpetual, never-ending death sentence. Constantly driving on a road that never ends. Like that movie Dead End where the family is stuck driving on that road in the middle of a forest and the road literally never ends. Is anybody else just like the least bit freaked out that we are the only car on the road right now? That freaked the heck out of me, dude. And this in the same way, driving through a tunnel dark, with no light, endlessly, that would also scare the toast out of me. It seemed as if the air from somewhere outside this world was surrounding me, giving me an awkward and discomfort feeling. I had chills all over my body. You know what, for a second, I almost read that as all over my booty? I, I don't know, sue me. I leaned over to the corridor to have a better glimpse of inside. All of the passengers seemed to be asleep, letting their bodies slip to the side. However, it did not give me a clear view due to the seats and the high backs. So on express buses, guys, the seats are like really comfortable. You know, it's an express bus. These seats are comfy. They're like recliners and they can actually lean back. Dude, they got headrests. They got really nice cushion support. But uh, yeah, because they're so big and fancy, she's saying that she literally can't see what's going on. To me, dude, I have a feeling that the passengers are all dead. I turned around to see the tail part of the bus. Okay, I don't know who translated this and I'm not bashing them, but it's just kind of funny because they're not using very common words to describe what's going on. I would have just said I turned around to see the back of the bus, but you know, tail part, that works too. <gasps> oh my, to find out some passengers lying on the floor with fatal damages to their body and bleeding heavily. Oh my, what? What? Dude, I was right. They're all dead. My girl, you better you better call the bus driver right now and uh, get off. No, wait, no, no, no. Getting off the bus is the last thing you want to do on a road that never ends. Okay, well, she's dead. A feeling of a terrible accident crossed my mind. Then suddenly, snap! A creepy weird noise came from the front. Snap, snap. Uh, the girl notices. She looks upwards towards the front of the bus. Snap. She hears the sound again, but we can't quite see anything. 
Snap! We hear the sound again, and we can almost sort of make out some kind of image. Snap! It gets louder. A clearer picture is beginning to form. Some kind of thing is at the front of the bus. Oh my goodness, and whatever thing it is, it is literally holding a cleaver, literally mutilating people with it. Oh, crimity, what the funk? Okay, well that's what we're looking at. Uh, hello. Oh my gosh, dude, it kind of looks like a little gremlin. Except, uh, you know, more evil. Oh, what the frick is that? From then on, I don't have an exact memory. Clank, clank. The girl tries to unbuckle her belt. I panically pushed my seatbelt button to loosen myself until my fingernails were broken into pieces. But, clank. Clank. The sound of the footsteps of the creature became eminently closer. Please. Please. Clank. Clank. Strangely, my seatbelt did not move a bit. What? Oh my gosh! No, 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 no! Oh my gosh, dude, I really wish I had a real gun right now. Ugh. No, actually, probably not. I would have shot my laptop screen. Dude, Dizzy, what is wrong with this guy? Seriously? Like, get some help, my dude. You need help. Get some help. And, uh, dermatologist as well. Dude, did he get her, though? Did he get her? Thump. The knife of the child went straight through my thigh, leaving me a burning pain, and stripped myself of consciousness. Okay, well, you could have just said she passed out, but, uh, stripped myself of consciousness. It gets the message across. Okay, so what happens next? Oh, yo, it's light again. We're back to the light. Huh? The woman wakes up. I woke up to find myself in a hospital ward. There might have been a terrible accident. TV newsmen went on to report this accident every day. Express bus collision in Ma Sung Tunnel. Eight were dead, including the driver leaving only myself and another passenger alive. People say I was in a coma for two days with severe damage to my leg and an injury to the head. It really was a major accident, but they say I survived because of the seatbelt. That protected me from bouncing out of the bus. Oh, so she was trying to get her seatbelt off, dude. <laughs> but it's a good thing she couldn't. So I'm confused now. Is this whole thing one sort of crooked, crazy dream? I tried to convince the doctor, nurses, and even police officers investigating the case about the kid I saw on the bus. But no one seemed to believe me. That sucks, man. I mean, my girl. And that's always the case. They never believe what actually happened. Another survivor is still in a coma. He's in the ward right next to mine. Looks like we're seeing someone walking in the middle of the night. That person probably... Oh, okay, so she's going over to that person. Good. Get some answers. Might have seen what I saw on the bus. Oh, damn. He's, he's really in a coma, dude. Holy crap. Oh, my gosh, dude. What the heck? It just changed to... What? That's the kid sitting on that person. But what, what, what is the what is that thing doing? It's just sitting there. There buried a family in Mountain Soksong located in Yonginchi, Gyeonggi-do, decapitated to death due to a wrongful accusation by traitors by King Gwanghae. One of them was a little child who just started to say a few words. A spirit of a young child looking like a half-rotten corpse used to come down to the village and claim tens of people's lives. So I guess the spirit was that of a deceased kid all the way ranging back from like castle ages in Korea. Having heard about the tragic story, Gwanghae placed a large rock on the field where the family is buried and the ghost of a child was never to be seen again. Masung Tunnel, where the accident took place, runs through Mount Seoksung and was open for traffic in 1994. Oh, okay. They disturbed the, the freaking rocks that was keeping the ghost in there. Back to the girl. She looks in the room. It looks like she's leaving. She walks away. But then, we hear something. She turns around. And then, the end. Oh, dude, what the heck? It's over just like that? There's always, like, some specific reason for why these ghosts or demonic entities are attacking these people. Like, either it was someone who died and came back for revenge, or it's some possessed thing that was wrongfully, you know, like, accused of something. Whatever it may be, I always appreciate the fact that there's actually a reason for what's happening. You know, not exactly a scientific answer, but at least an answer. You know, it's a little bit better than some of the creepy horror stories we read where there's no absolute sense taking place and just nothing happens for a specific reason. But, uh, yeah, holy crap. I wonder what happened to the girl at the end. Even though it seemed like everything was a dream, Apparently, everything that she saw was what really happened to her. Like, I guess she experienced what actually happened. But to normal people who are just living in the human world, they saw everything as just a car crash. That's actually kind of cool. It's a clever way of doing that. Guys, 
Thoughts, concerns, comments? What did you guys think about this story? Leave your comments down below. Personally, I'm a fan of Horang. If they upload something and it's a creepy story, it's gotta be good. This one was not a letdown in any way. Anyways, guys, I haven't really talked about this much. This is kind of a new thing that I wanna start, but I really wanna start reading stories that you guys have written, if you guys want me to read them. Now, if it's not a comic like the ones we've been reading, like a manga or a manhwa, you know, something with pictures or illustrations, then there's probably a lower chance that I'll be reading it in one of my videos. So I guess this is more to any comic artists or any story writers out there that, you know, are illustrators or animators as well. Guys, I am talking to you. If you want your comic read in one of my next videos, please feel free to email me, guys, in my business email at terrysongtv at gmail.com. And if it feels like something that I could put in one of my videos, then I'll definitely do it. I think it would be a great way to not only see what your work looks like read by someone else, but also a great way to get feedback from a bunch of different people. So if that's something you guys are interested in, please feel free to email me, okay? I'm very interested in seeing what you guys have. Anyways, that'll be about it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like, hit that subscribe button if you're new. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Good night.